Hey, welcome back, and of course, happy Saturday. If you're seeing this collab video on my channel, you know it's a Saturday. Uh, that's when I post videos from my recent collaboration with Jeremiah from Camino Guide and Nadine from Nadine Walks. Today, I'm going to be talking, or we're going to be talking about a subject very near and dear to my heart, which is um, speaking languages and specifically, you know, how important is it that you be able to speak French or Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, the language of the Camino that you're walking. Um, so I think you'll find this really interesting, both if you do speak the language, if you don't, if you have taken the Camino, if you haven't. Let us know your experiences below. Did you have any funny interactions in a language? You know, I know it's always fun when, and the one in Spanish is when somebody wants to say I'm embarrassed and they say, estoy embarazada or embarazada in Spain. And they basically just said they've preg they're pregnant. So leave us a, a comment below if you have any funny language stories or if you have any questions. And, um, Thanks again for joining us. We hope you're you're really enjoying these videos. I was just going to yeah. say, you had mentioned, as you were talking about some of the cultural differences, it was just making me think about the language. And I know we had mentioned that a little bit earlier in this talk, and I kind of wanted to circle back to it. But about, you know, for, I think, those of us who maybe are on the Camino and in Spain and don't speak Spanish, like how... I think it could be helpful. Well, one, I just would love to hear your experience, but I think for other pilgrims too, just to hear a little bit about how that does impact your experience on the Camino. Um, and then if you do speak the language, also how that could impact the experience. Um, and I, I think I had shared before that I don't speak Spanish. Um, I really, you know, I knew maybe a couple handfuls of words before I started my first Camino. And I think since then I've been in Spain enough and walking enough that I've picked up what I think is become kind of like the pilgrim lingo, <laughs> enough pilgrim Spanish to, you know, communicate my basic needs. I, I know last summer I had to make some reservations as I walked. And so I did call places and just kind of muddle through the Spanish and it wasn't pretty at all, but, you know, I was able to kind of figure it out. But, um, I think for me, it's been a different experience walking in Spain, not being able to speak the language versus the the walk that I did in France. I can speak French. Um, I'm not super fluent, but definitely conversational. And it it just was a very interesting experience to be in, you know, being in each country and in one mm -hmm. kind of being able to communicate a lot more easily. And then when I'm walking in Spain, having more of a challenge. But I also think, too, this depends so much on the routes that you choose to walk if you can't speak the language. Yeah. I, you know, my experience on the front says was that it wasn't too difficult to not speak Spanish. I made a few friends pretty quickly who did speak Spanish. And, and I right. think there's such an international community as well that, again, in a group, there's so many different languages going around. English is, you know, kind of a common denominator among a lot of pilgrims so that I never felt so isolated. I think almost always on that first Camino, I had someone I could talk to. Um, and then my experience in France, and I could speak some French, but on the routes in France, you tend to typically only see other French pilgrims or French speaking mm -hmm. pilgrims. It's a lot more uncommon to encounter pilgrims who can't speak French. And so um, even my level, I, I was conversational, but I would be at dinners and the conversation was just mm -hmm. flying around me and yeah. I could keep up and then it did feel pretty isolating to kind of sit there and and just know like oh there's a whole great conversation happening and I just can't quite grasp it so I know I kind of threw a lot out there but I I think it's it's just interesting to kind of hear about the different experiences in terms of communicating yeah I mean I so I speak Spanish fluently and French fluently as well um I've been studying Spanish since I was 12 or something like that. And then French, I started learning uh, a little bit later in life. But I think there's, so there's two questions, right? The question a lot of people ask in the forums yep. is like, do I have to speak this language? Do I have to speak Spanish to do the Camino? So I think there's a big difference between do you have to and should you? Um, so I don't think, especially for the Francais, I don't think you have to, because I think at this point, a lot of the accommodation, especially, you know, or the places where pilgrims eat, they at least have a menu translated into English, sure. um, that somebody will speak English, or like you said, you will find somebody there mm -hmm. who is either a Spanish speaker that speaks English and can help translate, or somebody who speaks enough Spanish to help get by. Um, but on some of the other routes, like on the Aragonese, there were 
I mean, there were places where nobody spoke English and I actually had to, I translated for a French man into mm -hmm. Spanish. And then, so that was real trippy. That was the first time I've ever translated in both two Latin languages and both of which are not my own native language. <laughs> but should you speak the language? Should you learn enough to try to interact at least at a basic level, I absolutely think so. I think what's tough and what gets discouraging for people is that you may know how to say like, necesito una cama, I need a bed, but then what comes back to you, <laughs> it, you can't understand. And so I think a lot of people get frustrated there, but, and that's, so language learning takes a period of time, right? It's not an instant process. I think it's never too late to start. And I actually am going to have some content on my channel coming up soon about like my perspective on this and, and some stuff that I recommend, but it's certainly never too late to start. And even knowing some basic stuff can help you in so many, so many ways. Like I, that, I use Spanish to speak with Italian people. There was, I don't know if you guys experienced, there were so many Italian people on the Camino Frances. A lot of them mm -hmm. did not speak English, but by me speaking Spanish and them speaking Italian, we were able to sort of communicate. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, for me though, it's extremely important because I, so I started living abroad when I, in 2005. Uh, not to get into any politics here, but we had a president that was not not respected, not liked at all in Spain. And so it was a very, that's where I was living. And it was a very interesting experience when they learned that you're from America, they just like always wanted to talk about political things. What do you mm -hmm. think, blah, blah, blah. And so it was really at that moment that I started to see myself as kind of like ambassador for the US, mm -hmm. I hope, in, in a good way. And that is like, that is kind of the, what I, what people sort of knew me as, as I was walking, because I was be speaking French with this person and Spanish with this person, English with this person. And I would get to a place where I hadn't met people and they're like, oh, you're the American that speaks three languages. It was like, it didn't compute for them. And, and with fairness, we're not a country really known for um, pushing learning languages other than our own. So for me, it's extremely important to be able to try to communicate at least basically. And so I think, making an effort you may find those people that just get frustrated and speak back to you in english but making an effort is certainly you're going to get more grief for for being somebody that's like i don't speak spanish right. why don't you speak english than you will for just trying your best and i think my experience especially in spain is that they're so appreciative of any efforts they'll work with your accent they'll really try to understand like spanish just want to have a good time they want to meet people and so yeah i think like i said it's it's never too late to start and i think it is it's just really enriching to the experience to be able to have some of the basic language skills yeah it's, you know, my, my Spanish, and I actually joke on my channel all the time about how terrible my Spanish is, because I've, I've had, I don't know, three years total, I think, two years in high school, and then I, I did, uh, I audited some classes when I was going back for the first time, I audited some at the university, and, but my Spanish is terrible, my pronunciation is worse than my vocabulary, and so it's like, I can't say any of these words, and to the point that they're even recognizable, but I think what you said there, Kate, about, like, the attempt to do so, by so much goodwill with people and so we're j mm -hmm. we're joking about how terrible it is rather than you know the kind of arrogance and even i my approach very much with every with everyone else is one of humility like recognizing mm -hmm. how ridiculous it is that i have a phd in america and i literally can't speak any of the languages i supposedly studied right like i mean so <laughs> i mean and so i just approach it with as much humility as i can i find that that buys a lot of goodwill with folks mm -hmm. um and we can make a joke of it and uh and you know it was interesting how many times i got from the young pilgrims so i was walking with a really young group this summer i mean is there a they were almost all of them were very in their 20s and 30s and um and so they all knew multiple languages. They were all, I mean, we were having conversations in Spanish and French and Italian and English every place that we went. Um, but it was interesting how many of them would ask me, well, what's it like that everyone can speak your language? You know, like just being able to yeah. walk into all these conversations because English was such a trade language that, that folks were, you know, that was probably the primary language that was being spoken at dinner and stuff until it's 
slip into Spanish and at a much faster rate that then the arguments would always be in Spanish and Italian. <laughs> I didn't get any of that. So that's a good point. Cause I remember, so I'm a part of a Facebook group called Compostel. So it's a French speaking group. And I remember somebody writing a few weeks ago, I think they were on the Francais and they, they wrote like, I'm getting a little frustrated because everyone's speaking English and I don't speak mm. English. Mm. And so, I mean, it does go to show that I think English certainly is the universal language that people default to. And especially, I mean, you have a lot of people, at least when I was walking from Northern European countries, like the Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, um, mm. Denmark, Germany, mm. and the English level was really, really high. Yeah. Um, it was more, and this has been my experience too, living in Spain, living in France, I know Italy as well, Portugal, the English levels, it's, it's not the same as in those countries. Um, so I think it is interesting, the dynamic you see developing and the fact that English sometimes takes kind of, it, it becomes the dominant language. So I like what you're saying about buying goodwill. Like, speak, no matter what your accent is, I mean, it is problematic if what you're saying can't be understood, but at least it's like a sign of bravery, <laughs> right? Like yeah. you're trying. Yeah. I know so many, so many Spanish people and French people that won't try English because mm. they're just really shy and really yeah. nervous. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a, it's, I think that's one of the things Americans are, are known for, good or bad, is that no matter how awful our accent is, we still try. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen Emily in Paris on Netflix, but um, the main actress, like, she said her French has actually gotten worse since doing the show because she has to make her French accent sound, so oh, like, just horrible, the worst it could ever sound. Um, but yeah, it is a sign of bravery, and I, I think you're certainly gonna have better interactions the more you try. So, mm -hmm. and I, I love learning a language. Like, there is no other feeling like saying something and being like, "Are th I know someone told me that this means this? Does it work?" And it works, and you're like, yeah. "Oh my gosh, we're we're conversing in another language." I love that feeling. Yeah. So, well, there you have it. Those are our thoughts on the importance of uh, trying at least to speak. Uh, another language while you're walking the Camino. If you don't speak any Spanish or French or Portuguese, uh, let us know down below if you have any plans on learning before you go. All right, thanks guys. And as always, buen Camino.